Now it has reached the level of violence that we have this massive flood. We have let the foxes loose in the chicken coop, and now these chickens are coming home to roost in Western Europe and also will come to America. The Hungarian prime minister says, we're not going to do this. He warned the European Union not to impose, impose a plan for this. And there's three other countries that are doing that as well. The Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Poland have also said, we are not going to have our countries destroyed by the European Union, by the globalists in the European Union. Now, there's an interesting article by Peggy Noonan in the Wall Street Journal. She talks about migrants and the elites. Now, this is on the Drudge Report. And I thought it was very interesting because she takes the tag. She talks, uh, starts by talking about Richard Haas of the Council on Foreign Relations. And she says, she quotes him saying, the more that Europe responds, the more it will reinforce the supply of migrants. Europe is caught. And he's talking about responding to the violence in the Middle East, the turmoil that our foreign policy has created. He says, this is now part of the architecture of the area. Now, she takes this as a standpoint, he's talking about blowback, and he's saying, well, it's unavoidable, we can't do anything about this. It is not blowback. Richard Haas and the Council on Foreign Relations knows perfectly well, this is an architecture that hasn't just arisen with a, a tornado in a brickyard. This is something that they have been designing. The Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberg Commission, they have all talked about doing this. They've been planning this for a very long time, but we don't have any politicians that will even acknowledge that it's blowback. It's just something that we have to deal with. There's a humanitarian crisis, so we need to let these people in. That's what we are told. But listen to what Peggy Noonan says. She says, damning the elites is often a mindless, phony, and manipulative game. She said, malice and delusion combined to produce the refrain, those fancy people in their Georgetown cocktail parties or the left-wing posers with their apartments in Brussels. That's not what's behind this. Certainly, we know that she sees this simply as a disconnect between the people who are in power and the people who are suffering from bad government. But we understand, because we have seen the documents, we know we've been talking about this for a very long time, about the plan for world government. We've seen them openly talking about how the economic crisis in the euro can only be solved by the surrender of sovereignty to the center. We see the trade agreements that now nobody is talking about at the moment, but they're going to be coming. Those trade agreements are going to consolidate the regional consolidations. They are the next stepping stone to consolidating us to a global consolidation. She says the gap between those who run governments and those who are governed has now grown huge and portends nothing good. Yes, and it didn't just happen. It was by design. Stay with us when we come back. We're going to have some updates on what's going on in politics today. Rick Perry bowed out. We'll have some comments about that and some updates on Hillary and Trump, the front runners in the Democrat and GOP tickets. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. Clean, toxic-free body is the foundation of true health. Introducing Deep Cleanse by InfoWarsLife.com, a scientifically formulated blend of nanocolloidal zeolites and organic ingredients that aid the body in cleansing chemicals and toxic metals. Using our proprietary multi-step extraction technology, Deep Cleanse is our most affordable all-in-one cleanser. With concentrated organic compounds like cilantro, milk thistle, fulvic acid, orange peel, zeolites, and others, Deep Cleanse doesn't hold back. Instead of buying five, six, or even seven different 
different cleansing products. We use decades-old scientific research to put together the Rolls-Royce of all-in-one cleansing. Look, there's a reason Deep Cleanse is the only product on the market that uses our proprietary Spigerex herbal processing technique. We use only the highest quality organic herbs backed by serious research, and we still bring it to you at the best price out there. If you wish to find Deep Cleanse and experience the all-in-one cleansing, visit InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Introducing the first proprietary oxygen-based intestinal cleanser, Oxy Powder, backed by real FDA-approved phase one, two, and three clinical trials. People are suffering from all kinds of digestive issues these days. All the toxins from the air, the food, the water, ultimately ends up in the gut or affects the gut. My main focus was to come up with a remedy for this, something that's safe and effective that anyone can take on a regular basis to keep their intestinal lining clean. My recommendation is to clean your intestines at least two to three times a week to prevent the toxic buildup from going into your bloodstream. Take your health into your own hands and start cleansing your body today with Oxy Powder. Secure your Oxy Powder today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> Now, the next big debate, of course, is going to be next Wednesday, the same day of InfoWars Money Bomb. And we're going to be covering that here live with commentary as it happens. Today, we had one of the candidates who didn't make the big debate. He was going to be in the junior varsity debate again. Rick Perry announced that he is withdrawing from the 2016 candidacy. And of course, I guess you could say that maybe he paraphrased Nixon saying, you're not going to have Ronald Raven to kick around anymore. But... Um, Seriously, uh, maybe he's going to be on the short list for a campaign position if a Republican gets the, wins the presidency. Maybe the Department of Education, maybe he could uh, uh, get an education there himself with some remedial reading. But as Leanne McAdoo points out, at least the state of Texas did not go bankrupt like many of Donald Trump's uh, businesses that he's run. Now, we had a very interesting story today about Donald Trump. He was questioned by, very briefly, by Nick Gillespie of Reason Magazine. He asked him about libertarianism. What is his view of libertarianism? And here's the long explanation that Donald Trump gave. Donald, what do you think about libertarianism? I like it. A lot of, lot like of good things. It? I don't want to talk to you now, but a lot of good things. All right. A lot of good points. Watch your tripod. Watch your You want to name one of them? Be careful. There you go. Very detailed explanation about his understanding of libertarianism and the things that he agrees and disagrees with it about. No, not at all. He just says, yeah, it's got some good points, a lot of good things, a lot of good points. That's what we're seeing over and over again from not only Donald Trump, but from all of the presidential candidates. We're not really getting any answers, but of course, and we haven't seen anything in Donald Trump's background, anything that he's done, anything he's proposed that is even vaguely libertarian. You wanna talk about private property? You can't talk about private property if you're going to use the government's eminent domain powers to seize other people's private property for your use. That's not free markets. That's crony capitalism. It's corruption. It's what we always used to call it. Now we call it crony capitalism. It's not a free market. Has he ever talked about civil liberties? Is he concerned about the war on drugs, about civil asset forfeiture? No. Is he concerned about our interventionist foreign policy? Is he concerned about dragnet surveillance? He said Ed, Edward Snowden is a total traitor, implying that he ought to be in prison, at the very least, perhaps executed. 
This is not a man who supports any libertarian philosophies, anything of freedom that I can understand. He is a full-on traditional neocon, and he is a crony capitalist to boot. Now, he's in Iowa, and this course a couple of weeks ago, in August 26th, Business Insider reported that he has asked some questions about his Christianity because a lot of the Iowa voters are Christians. And essentially, he did the same thing that he did with the libertarians. He evaded the question. They asked him, because he had said recently, he said, well, yeah, my favorite book, my favorite book is the Bible. So they said, well, uh, can you name one or two of your favorite Bible verses? He says, well, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me, that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into verses. The Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into any specifics. Now, ask yourself, every Christian knows that if anybody is really into the Bible as he says he is, they don't have a problem about talking about it. They don't think that it is something that they need to hide, that they need to run from. And of course, he comes across as very phony to anybody who's looking at it. They also ask him later on in the interview, they say, well, are you an Old Testament guy or a New Testament guy? And he cleverly evades that as well. He doesn't immediately ask, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> Old or new? I don't know what you're talking about. He says, oh, probably equal. He's sitting on the fence, okay? Here's, here's a Bible verse that's very short. Pride goes before fall. He might want to think about that. And, and here's the deal. This is why it matters, whether you're a Christian or not, whether you're a libertarian or not. If somebody produces a document like he did, he produced a very detailed document finally about his immigration policy. It had a lot of good points in it. It had a lot of things that I disagreed with. But the bottom line is this. You can't know what he's going to do if he's a person that doesn't have any integrity or character. That's true of any of the politicians. How many times are Republicans, how many times are the Tea Party conservatives going to vote for a John Boehner or they're going to vote for a Mitch McConnell and think that things are going to change? They know what you want to hear. They're going to tell you what you want to hear. This is a guy who says, yeah, the Bible is my favorite book, uh, the only book that I like more than my own, The Art of the Deal. This is a guy who knows how to close a deal because he knows what you want to hear. Would you buy a used car from this guy? I wouldn't. You have to understand that he is a very clever individual. He will tell you precisely what you want to hear, and that's the key behind every one of these power-seeking politicians. They all know exactly what you want to hear, and they're going to parrot that back. The question is, is this something they have fought for? Is this something that defines them throughout their life? Will they stand against the tide and do the right thing? We don't have any record of that happening with any of these people. Look at Hillary Clinton. James O'Keefe has struck again. He shows that within her campaign, this is in the state of Nevada, he shows massive corruption in the campaign, willingly knowing that they're violating the law when they're registering voters. They're not supposed to talk to them about candidates. They're not supposed to do this within a certain uh, uh, area of uh, public buildings. They know what the law is, and this is what they had to say. This is what their attorney had to say. He caught this on film. She said, do whatever you can to them. She said, whatever you can get away with, just do it until you get out, like to kicked out, like totally. Like totally, you know, you get kicked out. She says, ask for forgiveness, not for permission. They're totally corrupt. They do whatever they can get away with if you let them, if you think that these people are going to somehow fight for your freedom, they're going to hand it to you on a silver platter. It isn't going to happen. And this kind of corruption is very obvious to people about Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton's campaign has gradually gone from a bid for the highest seat in the land to a bona fide, deplorable circus of failure. But Bill Clinton's first man ticket to four more years of a New World Order backed gravy train just keeps on moving down the track. Pay no attention to the campaign stop in Columbus, Ohio that looks more like everyone on Hillary's bus just pretended to be the crowd. According to Ed Henry's pictures, one photo shows the tiny crowd and the other shows the rest of the empty hall. And this wasn't some small town in the middle of nowhere. Columbus, Ohio is the 15th largest city in America. Perhaps she thought folks from the Columbus neighborhood of Clintonville or Ohio State University would turn out. Well, they didn't. And we can build an America where every father can save his daughter. You can grow up to be president of the United States.
It has gotten so bad. Supporting Hillary's damaged criminal and blood on her hands reputation might get you punched in the face. They thought it said Hillary for president. So I'm sitting here and the bartender finally walks over and he goes, you know what? I've been pacing back and forth back here. I'm just so angry that you would